The Concorde crash was a truly shocking event. It was the year 2000 and the fastest airliner in the world suddenly burst into flames just after takeoff. Out of control, it crashed into a hotel near the runway of the Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. What was the cause of the accident? You might think it was a malfunction, or perhaps due to poor maintenance, but that wasn't the case. In this video, we'll reconstruct what happened using information provided by the French Ministry of Transport. For those of you who didn't know this already, the Concorde was a marvel of engineering that could easily break the sound barrier, reach a top speed of over 2,000 kilometers per hour, and make the Paris to New York trip in 3 hours and 40 minutes. Today, it takes 7 to 8 hours approximately. For about 30 years, the Concorde soared across the skies of the world until the tragic accident on July 25th, 2000, which led to it being phased out. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers. We are Italians. It was manually translated into English, but dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video! July 25th, 2000. From the Charles de Gaulle airport in Paris, the Air France Concorde is about to leave for New York. The passengers are taking their seats. For many of them, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. They have spent about $12,000 ahead for a round-trip ticket, because the Concorde isn't just any plane. What immediately stands out about the Concorde is the unique shape of its wings, which were designed in the form of a V in order to withstand supersonic speeds. Supersonic means a speed in excess of approximately 1,234 km per hour, which is the speed of sound. In fact, the Concorde reached speeds of over 2,100 km per hour. According to some estimates, it could go as fast as 2,179 km per hour. This incredible speed could also be achieved above all thanks to four turbojet engine systems located behind the wings, fueled by 13 tanks positioned on the wings and the body of the aircraft. Knowing their exact positions will help us understand the dynamics of the accident. The engines consumed a staggering 17 liters per passenger for every 100 kilometers. Just to give you a point of comparison, the Airbus A380, which is today's largest airliner, consumes 3 liters of fuel per passenger every 100 kilometers. Of course, the A380 can accommodate many more passengers, even up to 580, depending on the internal configuration of the aircraft. The Concorde, on the other hand, could carry up to 144, but the per capita figure is very telling. The Concorde was considered a remarkably safe aircraft and had never experienced a fatal accident. However, it had one weak point, its wheels. As it had a remarkably high takeoff speed of around 370 km per hour, the aircraft's wheels were subjected to enormous stress. And with that, we arrive at that memorable July 25th, 2000. The passengers had completed boarding, and by 2.25 p.m., everything was ready for departure. In the cockpit, the three highly experienced pilots, a captain, a first officer, and a flight engineer, got the four engines started. They asked the control tower to use runway 26 right for takeoff, requesting the whole runway or... Toute la piste. <laughs> in other words, specifying that they would require the entire length of the runway because, as reported by the captain, the plane had reached its maximum takeoff weight and they therefore needed a long ground run before takeoff and consequently the full length of the runway. On the runway, right before the Concorde, a Continental Airlines DC-10 aircraft had just taken off. And here we have it. This is what caused the Concorde accident a metal strip. From the right wing engine of the DC-10, a strip of metal unexpectedly detaches and falls onto the runway. No one notices anything, 
and the DC-10 continues on its flight undisturbed. Meanwhile, the Concorde positions itself on the runway and aligns itself, as they say in the jargon. And here we need to pay attention to what is said by the captain, who recites the procedures that will be followed in case of an emergency during takeoff. Between 0 and 100 knots, which is 185 kilometers per hour, I will stop if any acoustic emergency signal sounds. Between 100 knots and V1, I will only stop in the event of an engine fire, a malfunction message, or a tire blowout. After V1, takeoff will proceed. What exactly is V1? It's the speed of no return. In other words, once you exceed this speed, it would be incredibly dangerous to simply abort the takeoff. Why? Because you'd risk going off the runway. After V1, the only thing you can do is get the aircraft into the air and then solve any problems in flight. And in a matter of seconds, that's exactly what happened to the Concorde. From that point on, it all took place in the space of 121 seconds. At 2.42 and 30 seconds, the pilot pulls the throttle and brings the four engines to life. They activate with a roar and their power grows until they reach maximum thrust. The plane begins to accelerate. The flight engineer announces four greens, four greens, to signify that the four engines have been activated and are functioning as they should. Six seconds later, the first officer calls out V1, indicating that the Concorde has reached the critical point of no return. At 2.43 and 9 seconds, at a speed of 108 knots, there's a slight swerve to the left, and in the cockpit, an acoustic warning light is activated. What has happened, and it's something of which the pilots are not yet aware, is that the Concorde has run right over the metal strip that was lying on the runway, and a tire has exploded. A tire has exploded, and a chunk of debris ends up hitting a tank. The warped tank initially withstands the impact, but the internal pressure is such that, suddenly, a tear opens and fuel begins to gush out. At this point, something ignites the fire. Investigations found that the exploding tire also damaged electrical cables, which would have caused sparks. The control tower takes in the scene and seeing the strip of fire communicates with the Concorde. Concorde 4590, you have flames behind you. You have flames behind you. The Concorde continues to veer to the left and this is due to the damaged tire and the flames which are slowing down the aircraft. The captain tries to counteract the swerving by keeping to the center of the runway with the rudder. Two seconds later, the lights indicating problems with engines one and two, the ones on the left, come on. That's why the aircraft was swerving to the left. The first officer says, Watch out! Watch out. The Concorde has hit a speed of 187 knots, a full eight knots below the right speed for that phase of takeoff, which is about 150 kilometers per hour. Losing thrust in two engines can be disastrous. A few seconds later, a fire alarm also goes off in the cockpit. The captain requests an engine fire procedure, which is what is usually carried out to extinguish flames in an engine. What he doesn't know is that the fire is not in the engine, but is instead coming from the rupture in the tank, and there's no way to put it out. The engineer reads out the message on a new warning light that has come on, engine failure, engine number two, the second engine then shuts down completely, while the first will shut down shortly thereafter. The Concorde takes off, but with engines one and two irrevocably out of commission, the aircraft's speed is not what it should be. The first officer urgently says, Watch out the airspeed, the airspeed, the airspeed! Control the airspeed, control the airspeed! At this point, a frantic battle is being waged against the effects of the flames, which are damaging the components of the left wing and altering the attitude of the aircraft. The Concorde continues to tilt to the left, with the pilot attempting to steer in the opposite direction, but unfortunately, it's too late. In the cockpit, the alarm blares, pull up, pull up, meaning lift the plane, lift the plane. At 44 minutes and 31 seconds past two, the Concorde crashes into a hotel. a hotel located to the west of Paris's Charles de Gaulle airport. All of the people aboard the flight, a total of 109 individuals, tragically died on impact, along with four people who were inside the hotel at the time. It was truly terrible accident and now the question is, 
Was there anything the pilots could have done to avoid the tragedy? Well, what also emerged from subsequent investigations is that the pilots had, in fact, never been trained for this kind of scenario, one in which no less than two engines were out of use. The real culprit of the tragedy was this, the metal strip, measuring just 43 centimeters in length. Investigations also revealed that this strip had been repaired twice in the previous two months and that the repair was not in compliance with instructions. What became of the engineering marvel that was the Concorde? For a while the aircraft that were still in circulation were modified to make them even safer, but the operating costs were too high and the tragic events of September 11, 2001 caused the aviation market to collapse making the dream of supersonic flight economically unsustainable. The Concorde made its final flight on November 26, 2003, 30 years after its inaugural flight. Today this incredible aircraft is a museum piece. If you ever find yourself at Charles de Gaulle Airport, you can see a model on display outside. Maybe when you leave the airport, take a look, because it's really something. That being said, Thank you so much for watching until the end. I'll see you again soon, right here on Geopop, Everyday Science.